right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. Today I'm going to build an electrochemical hydrogen fuel cell using the material I have on the table. Starting with some potassium hydroxide, which will be my electrolyte, a voltmeter to check any voltage or amperage that we generate, a soldering iron, some wire, this is just some thin stuff that I can easily work with, a vessel to hold everything that can hold water, some small glass or plastic vials, about a foot of platinum wire, I got this for about $10 on eBay, a 9 volt battery to charge it, some glue, and some tape. So that should be out everything. Let's go ahead and start putting it together. So first I'm going to solder the platinum wire onto the copper wire. This will make it easier to work with and it'll make it so I can use less platinum overall. Now I protect the connections with some glue to keep the copper from corroding. Now I just wrap the platinum around something so that I have a lot of surface area in a small space. Now the electrodes are pretty much done. The reason we're using platinum is because of its incredible resistance to corrosion and the fact that it can be used to catalytically react things without actually having a flame, as you can see here with the butane from this lighter. Now to put together the actual reaction cell. I start by gluing these bottles together so that they're all in one place and easier to work with. Stick the platinum inside, go ahead and put some tape on there temporarily so that I can glue the wires on. And uh, I'll leave the tape on until it's all cured. And then once the glue's cured, I can rip the tape off and it's uh, pretty nice looking there. And there's the reaction cell. As you can see, the platinum wire on the inside, I purposely made it so it's very visible. Now I'm going to put some water inside the glass along with the potassium hydroxide. And let's mix that up until thoroughly dissolved. Once that's dissolved, we can submerge the cell into it. Make sure to get rid of all air bubbles so we can make sure that we're just getting hydrogen and oxygen. Now finally, I secure the cell in one place so that it doesn't move around and I can see it easily from the outside. And there it is, a completed device. What this device does is react hydrogen and oxygen gas together through an electrolyte. It's kind of similar to a battery and it is essentially reverse electrolysis. What I like about this setup is that as long as you're supplying hydrogen and oxygen to the electrodes, it will make electrical power and it will have no natural discharge unlike batteries. An easy way to provide hydrogen and oxygen is to hook up the battery and do a little bit of electrolysis. Now that the electrodes are saturated in gas, I can generate a potential of about 1.2 volts, as you can see here through the voltmeter. Now I test the maximum amperage by shorting it through the voltmeter and I get right about half a milliamp. That amount of current is well below the amount needed to run even the smallest LED lights. So I think I'm going to have to actually scale up in future projects and do multiple sales with much more surface area and perhaps a way to get the electrolyte and gas to contact the electrodes at the same time. But uh, until then, I'm going to do a quick demonstration with the fact that the device will use up hydrogen and oxygen. So I will set this to run overnight and see how much it uses. To do this test, I'll just cross the wires so that it's completely shorted out. Now what you're seeing is an eight hour time lapse running on a loop. And if you look carefully, you can see that the hydrogen is being consumed by the device over the period. Like I said, it's not producing very much power, so it's not going to consume very much hydrogen, but it's definitely doing it, and you can see it here. I would like to note that I killed the temperature constant so it's not the gas temperature changing and causing volume issues. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.